Funding for this program was provided by the UCLA Office of Instructional Development. Biochemistry, the study of life on the molecular level. The research of structures and functions of biomolecules are directly influenced by their aqueous environment. So it is not surprising that all biochemical experiments involve the quantitative transfer of solutions. For experimental biochemistry, this specifically involves the mastery of pipetting. This short presentation will highlight technical aspects of pipetting that are designed to help you to be accurate, reproducible, and efficient in your measurements. In every experiment, you should have a clear reasoning behind why each step is carried out. Such understanding extends to every detail, no matter how insignificant it may seem to be. So as you view this video, not only focus on the technical process, but more importantly, on the purpose behind the procedure. In most labs, volumetric pipettes are used for transferring volumes greater than a milliliter. In our lab, we will use a type of volumetric pipette called the serological pipette. There are three basic steps in serological pipetting. The preparation of the bulb and pipette, the uptake of the solution, and dispensing of the solution. So let's first get familiarized with the bulb. There are three valves you need to use in order to pipette. The A or air valve, the S or suction valve, and the E or empty valve. To create a negative pressure in the bulb, press the A valve and squeeze the large bulb reservoir to expel the air. To take up the solution, press the S valve. To dispense the solution, press the E valve. This will release the majority of the solution. The residual volume is blown out by squeezing the small bulb reservoir. To first prepare the pipette, Rotate the pipette so that you can clearly see the graduation marks and numerations. To safely insert the pipette into the bulb, grasp the top of the pipette and firmly insert it into the bulb. Next, press the A valve and squeeze the bulb. And then place the pipette into solution. Before measuring the intended volume, you must first equilibrate the interior surface of the pipette. Equilibration is the process by which you draw up and release the solution within your pipette several times by pressing the S and E valves. Be sure that the solution is equilibrated above the height of the desired volume. After equilibration, you can then uptake and measure the desired volume. In order to obtain systematic measurements, it is essential that the solution is vertically straight and that the meniscus is viewed at eye level with the lowest point of the meniscus aligned with the intended volume's graduation mark. Once the solution is measured, wipe the exterior of the pipette with a clean lint-free tissue. To dispense the solution, make contact with the tip of the pipette to the interior surface just near the bottom of the container. 
You then press the E-valve and release the vacuum. The majority of the solution will be dispensed. Maintaining contact throughout this step is essential for the complete transfer of the solution. To remove the remaining solution, first wait a few seconds for the residual solution to fall to the tip. Then blow out the remaining solution by pressing the small bulb reservoir. Now, let's consider some common sources of random error. One source of error comes from air leaks between the pipette and bulb. If you have an air leak, the solution will drip out of the pipette without even releasing the vacuum in the bulb. To resolve this problem, you must first dispense the entire solution, readjust the pipette and bulb, and attempt to pipette the solution again. Another source of error is the presence of air pockets or bubbles. Air bubbles can arise in two ways. The first way is by allowing the level of the solution to drop below the tip of the pipette. To avoid this, be sure to move the pipette lower as the level of solution drops. Another way that air pockets can form is by simply using a new pipette. Small imperfections can trap air resulting in bubbles. This is one reason why pipettes are first equilibrated before the uptake. Equilibrating the pipette will release the trapped air. While dispensing the solution, it is also necessary to be careful of excessive drops present on the outside of the pipette. To prevent adding these excessive droplets, wipe off the outside of the pipette with a clean lint-free tissue. If a pipette is to be reused for multiple transfers, it is necessary to be concerned with the spread of contamination from one sample to another. Contamination arises when the tip is placed directly into a sample that contains pre-existing solution. Once this happens, you not only contaminate your other samples, but also your stock solution. To avoid such contamination, keep the tip of the pipette above the surface level of the solution. Although this is not foolproof, it will reduce the chances of contamination. We must also be very careful of contamination when sharing stock solutions. Never pipette directly from the shared stock into your samples. This could result in contamination that could affect everyone in the lab. When sharing a stock, take a sufficient aliquot reserved for you and your group's use. This is sound practice for any researcher. So. Let's recap on the important technical steps for serological pipetting. In preparing for the uptake of solution, firmly insert the pipette into the bulb and make sure that graduation marks and numbers are in view. Depress the bulb. Equilibrate the pipette. In taking up the solution, measure the volume at eye level. Check to see if there are any leaks or bubbles. Carefully wipe off any excess solution from the outside of the pipette using a clean lint-free tissue. While dispensing your solution, make contact with the end of the tip to the interior surface of the receiving container. For cases where there is pre-existing solution, contact should be made just above the surface level. Dispense the solution and maintain contact between your tip and the container. After the initial solution has been dispensed, wait for the remainder to reach the tip of the pipette. Then blow out the rest of the solution using the small bulb reservoir. 